Welcome back to the channel, everyone. If you're under contract on a new home or planning to buy one soon, make sure you watch this video. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to avoid before closing day to make sure that your transaction goes as smoothly as possible. I'm Joe Nelson with the Nelson Home Group, Kansas City's highest rated real estate team on Google. While it doesn't happen often, I've seen good people with the best of intentions blow up the closing process just days before and sometimes even the day of closing. This can cause a huge delay in moving into your new home or receiving the proceeds from the one you're selling. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the top five mistakes to avoid making before closing so this doesn't happen to you. Let's dive in. Mistake number one, opening any new lines of credit between getting pre-qualified for your loan and closing on your home. This is because any change in your credit score or cash funds available to you can significantly affect the underwriting process and change what you qualify for up to the actual day of closing. So don't go out and buy that new refrigerator just yet. Applying for a new credit card will create a hard inquiry on your credit, temporarily dropping the score. It's going to be a flag to your lender that your financial stability may not be worth the risk of the loan. You also run the risk of reducing the average age of your accounts which is why it's also best to avoid closing your older accounts during the mortgage process. Finally, an outstanding balance on a new line of credit will increase your credit utilization, which can negatively impact your credit score. So how can lenders tell if you open a new line of credit if they pre-approved you before you made the offer? Well, it's because lenders perform a final credit check just before closing to make sure that the borrower's financial situation hasn't changed and they're still eligible for the loan terms. This can take place the day before or even the day of closing. It may be tempting to get a new piece of furniture or a brand new appliance with a store card and the discounts and rewards that they offer, but it isn't worth the possibility of not closing on time or at all. The second thing that you need to avoid doing is scheduling your movers or really any non-essential utilities to begin the day of closing. The closing itself doesn't complete when you sign for the house, this is actually just the first step toward funding. Your home purchase isn't considered closed until all parties involved have signed the necessary paperwork and the funds for the purchase have reached the title company to be dispersed. Depending on where those funds are coming from and when everyone is signing, this process can take anywhere from a few hours to the next business day. Unless your contract states otherwise, the home isn't considered in your possession until closing is complete. Imagine this, you're purchasing a home and you've signed all the paperwork at 9 a.m. The sellers aren't signing their papers until 4 p.m. and they need the proceeds from this sale to close on their next home. You've asked your preferred internet provider to meet you at the house at noon to get service set up, but when you show up, the sellers are still there with boxes loaded for their move. They don't get to move into their next home until they get proceeds from your sale. So they have to wait until they complete their paperwork and the money is sent to the title company. It's still technically their house and now you're just trespassing. So how do you avoid this other than waiting for the next business day? Well, it's best to sign your paperwork at the earliest possible appointment in the day. Your agent should work with the cooperating agent to request that the other side do the same thing. This will help speed the funding process along once the money exchanges hands. If you plan to wire the money from your bank, try to set up the wire a day or two ahead of closing, if at all possible, and at the very least, as soon as you get your final numbers from your lender. If you're bringing a cashier's check to the closing table, make sure to run by the bank to get that check as soon as you know exactly how much it needs to be. The earlier your title company or escrow company has signed documents and funds, the quicker they can be dispersed and the quicker the closing process completes and you take possession of your new home. For these same reasons, the third thing you need to avoid is planning to move into the house on the same day as your closing. Hear me out. You can do everything exactly right, but there will always be things that are outside of your control or even your agent's control or maybe the lender's control. We had a situation once where a client signed their paperwork first thing in the morning and had already set up their wire the day before. They were part of a chain where there were two other closings dependent on the funds coming from theirs. Everything seemed to be going well until later that morning when we followed up for the confirmation of funding. 
Turns out the lender had mistakenly sent the funds to the wrong title company. That title company had not been working on the contract and had no reference for what the funds were for. So it had to go through their screening process before they could be sent back to the lender to be sent to the right title company. None of these closings were able to be completed that day and movers had to be rescheduled at the last minute. This is definitely not the norm, but it for sure left an impression. It was a huge inconvenience for both the sellers and the buyers. Moving can already be incredibly stressful. Take some of the pressure and urgency off of your shoulders by planning to move in the day after your closing. That will allow time for funding to complete should there be any hiccups. If you're selling your current home, you may actually be able to write in some additional time between closing and the day the buyers take possession to give you more time to get moved out. Your agent can negotiate on your behalf to delay the buyer taking possession for days after closing while still allowing the funding process to go through. It's also important to use a well-organized and efficient title company and mortgage lender that communicate with you and each other to prevent fiascos like the story I told you. Ask your agent who they would recommend. If they've been in the business for any length of time, they'll have a set of trusted vendors who have come through for them time and time again. Okay, the fourth thing to avoid right before closing. Make sure you don't overbook yourself the day of your closing. Title and escrow companies do multiple closings a day. You need to have enough flexibility that you can be available to sign your closing documents when they have availability for an appointment. It's important to carve that time out as early as possible to avoid schedule conflicts. Most title companies hold a standard nine to five business day, which runs right up against many work schedules. We like to get closing appointments on the calendar for our clients three weeks ahead of the closing day to give us plenty of room to find a time slot that works best for everyone's schedule. And also lots of notice to employers if time off is needed. If you're unable to get away earlier in the day and have to rush to the title company at 4 p.m., keep in mind this could push funding until the next business day. By scheduling early, you can catch a possible schedule conflict and your agent can help you work around it. Oftentimes, we've worked with mobile notaries who are able to meet at the buyer's place of business or on a lunch break or before the workday kicks off. You also want to make sure you carve out enough time to ask the closer any questions you might have about the paperwork. We've seen closings take anywhere from as little as 10 minutes for a quick cash deal to an hour and a half for someone with a lot of loan documents and questions. Plan for the pace you're most comfortable with. All right, rounding out with number five, don't forget to renew your driver's license or passport before your closing day. Don't head to your closing appointment without one of the two. You need a valid government issued ID in order to have your documents notarized. I know it sounds like going without saying, but with planning a move, making sure your funds are set up and ready on top of everything else going on in your life, it can be easy to let things like this fall through the cracks especially if they involve standing in the line for hours at D the DMV. It's often hard to find the time. You won't be able to sign your closing paperwork without it. So check to make sure your ID is valid and it won't expire before your closing date. If you need a renewal, make sure to start the process ASAP so you have plenty of time to receive the new ID in the mail before your closing date. All right, finally, carve out some time to celebrate. This is a big purchase. If you're a seller, it's likely the kickoff point to get into your next home or put more equity into your current home. If you're the buyer, you just bought a new house to make your own and build memories and traditions. Closing day should be a happy day, so don't stress too much. Once you've made it to this point, the heavy lifting is over. Well, except for maybe the actual heavy lifting of the moving of the furniture, but you can get excited about that. If you want to learn more about what to expect out of the buying process, from the home search to the closing, make sure to click the link in the description below to get a copy of our free buyer's guide. And let me know in the comments which of these mistakes stood out to you the most. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. We release a new Kansas City real estate estate or lifestyle video every Friday. And if you're looking to make a move in the Kansas City area, give me a call or shoot me a text. My number is on the screen and in the description box below. Put Kansas City's highest rated real estate team to work for you. See you next time.